I'm Nadia Ely, and welcome to today's discussion around grid resiliency and its impact on Dominion Energy's grid transformation plan, which aims to safely, reliably, and affordably shore up and improve our existing infrastructure and systems to equip them for the grid of the future. The series explores the various grid resiliency initiatives that play a role in making up the greater GTP. Two of those programs are the Voltage Island Mitigation and Substation Tech Deployment Initiatives. To educate us on the significance of them, our Manager of Electric Distribution Grid Planning, Ludo Hintos, and Manager of Grid Resiliency, Aaron Tickle. Thank you both for being with me. Ludo, I'd like to start with you. Can you walk us through what Substation Technology Deployment aims to achieve and how it contributes to the overall success of the grid transformation plan as a whole. Sure, Nadia, I'll be happy to. So the substation technology deployment program consists of deployment of modern technologies to upgrade a subset of our substations with key capabilities needed to support the increased adaption of DR resources such as rooftop solar, battery storage, electric vehicles into our distribution grid. So the targeted substations are the ones with currently no communication capabilities, electromechanical relay technology, and no remote monitoring and control systems in place. Additionally, these substations typically produce lower secondary voltages than our 34.5 kB substations. We typically refer to these stations as uh, D2D or distribution to distribution substations. So the goal of the program is focused on implementing key real-time monitoring, protection, automation, and, and control capabilities, including power quality monitoring. We are also planning to pilot three types of technologies that are pretty new to our distribution grid, and they are lightning detection system, distribution synchrophasers, and a substation communication protocol called IEC 61850. So these investments will result in increased safety and reliability, power quality, and really resiliency to our customers and enable us to explore new technologies. The overall contribution, co contribution of this program to the GTP is significant in a sense of the technological improvement of these substations, which will result in a further ability to safely and reliably interconnect the DRs like the solar and battery storage I mentioned and improve overall safety and reliability of the distribution grid. Thanks so much, Ludo, for that thorough answer. Aaron, turning to you now, let's talk about voltage island mitigation. Could you also explain the significance of this program and then maybe touch on how this program and substation technology deployment intertwine and work together? Sure, Nadia. Thank you. The voltage island mitigation program is basically a GTP program that addresses contingency concerns on our system. So, so you know, you have substation transformers that Ludo described, they, they take a higher transmission level voltage or sometimes a distribution voltage and they step it down to a lower voltage that can then be traveled, so to speak, to our homes and communities. They're typically very large pieces of equipment. They're expensive. They require a long lead time to secure, usually well over a year. It's not an item you can pick up at your local Walmart. They don't fail often. Um, the substation group does a lot of great work to maintain them and monitor them, but when they do occasionally fail, it can take quite a while to replace them. And in the majority of cases, we're able to restore service to customers affected by isolating the failed unit and then essentially rerouting the path, so to speak, by using an alternate transformer inside the same substation or through various circuit ties in the field sourced by sister substations in the area. However, in a few locations, there are transformers that if they should fail, we don't have those alternate sources available to restore service. These locations are essentially islands. And in those situations, we have to bring in what's called a mobile transformer in order to get the lights back on. And this effort can take 24 or more hours in some cases. And in today's environment where electricity is just so vital to everything we do in our lives, we're looking to eliminate those situations where we have the potential for an event like that. And that's where the Voltage Island Mitigation Program comes into play. And within this program, 
you know, we identify those locations where this risk is present, and then we create solutions that allow for the use of alternate sources during an outage event. These solutions usually involve, you know, an additional transformer in a station, or or sometimes we're able to create those alternate feeds through field ties with other circuits. We look at all options to determine, you know, what's the best solution and what is the most cost effective solution. Either way, should that identified transformer fail rather than it being a 24 hour plus outage, now we're looking along the lines of two to four hours usually to get the lights back on. And that's a big deal for us and for our customers. And I would say it overlaps with Ludo's program. I mean, we're both working in the stations. We're dealing with some similar equipment. Our goals are slightly different, but you know, we have to kind of look out for each other where we overlap. And, you know, when we go in and add a substation, that additional technology that he's he was talking about, a lot of times it comes along with that. So um, they are kind of sister programs in that regard. And Aaron, I was just going to add that we're working closely with one another and our teams are working closely together to gain the efficiency between the, the two programs, because we'll be finding out that, that stations that are on my list and substations that are on Aaron list might overlap sometimes. So we're closely working together to make sure that we're not building something that it will have to be undone in order to achieve another goal of the GTP. So we're really working together to make sure that we achieving both of our goals, but we're also not doing something that would make us undo some of these improvements. Sounds like a valuable collaboration. Thank you both for your points. Ludo, what are the long-term benefits of substation technology deployment to our customers, the company, and to the GTP? Aaron, I would also invite you to explain the same for voltage island mitigation as well. Thanks, Nadia. As I mentioned earlier, the key benefit of the substation technology deployment program is to enable further adoption of DERs, right, including rooftop solar, utility-scale solar, battery storage, transportation, electrification. And along with that technology, we'll also automatically improve reliability, power quality, and resilience of our distribution grid, and also improve overall safety of our substations. DER saturation and EV or electric vehicle adoption will at some point cause reverse power flow along distribution circuits and through substation transformers. That reverse flow will impact protection schemes and lead to voltage fluctuations. The grid that we, we've been uh, experiencing been designed and built to, to deliver power from point A to an end user, and we're seeing that changing, right? We're seeing power being pushed from our customers or from their solar site or battery storage back onto the grid. The substation technology deployment program will allow high resolution and digital monitoring and control of substation assets and protection settings in real time, which will help mitigate those adverse impacts like voltage fluctuation. Also, outage duration is also expected to decrease as digital relays and communication are implemented in those stations. So today our operators are not able to see those stations from the operating center. They're really not able to see when an outage occurs. This technology basically will be able to create various alarms and create various point of monitoring and provide key parameters to our operator so that they can react to outages within seconds instead of minutes. So all of this will improve overall reliability for our customers. It will provide company with high resolution digital data, enable remote monitoring and control of our substation assets, and enable further adoption of other distribution technologies such as Flisser. I would say for the voltage island mitigation program, the benefit is simply just eliminating the risk of these lengthy outages in this specific situation with this piece of equipment. You know, that's obviously a, a big benefit to our customers, but it also eliminates, you know, the negative perception that the company receives, you know, if something like that were to occur. There are some tertiary, I would say, benefits and that the new sources can also be used for maintenance and, and other outage activities that, that take place. But by and large, the big benefit here is just removing that risk and getting it out of the equation. Thank you both for your points. The last question speaks to both of you once again. And I'd like to know what success looks like for each of these programs. Luda, I'll start with you and Aaron, kindly weigh in afterwards. 
sure, Nadia, as the success of the program and really success of all the GTP programs starts with safety. You know, ensuring that every project from, you know, engineering and design to construction and commissioning is executed with safety in mind and that everyone involved in transforming these substations remains injury free. Secondly, ensuring that the intended benefits of this program are met and that these projects deliver on the value promised to our customers. And lastly, delivering these projects on time and on budget. This is proving to be somewhat challenging with the current supply chain setbacks, but our teams are working very hard at exploring ideas on how to overcome these challenges to keep these projects on track. And I would just reiterate what Ludo said. I think a big part of this is is executing this work safely, um, efficiently, you know, hitting our budget targets, making sure we're scoping the right solutions and carrying out the plan and kind of coming full circle to the last question. You know, success to me is we're eliminating these voltage islands on the system and the risk that's associated with these lengthy outages for our customers. And along with that is eliminating the negative perception and outage like this creates for the company. I think when you look at how this program fits in the greater grid transformation plan, you know, this is part of our efforts to set the system up for success over the long term. And even as we do this work, we want to make sure, like we talked, we're taking other program initiatives into account and the plans they have, such as the substation tech deployment program that Ludo has described. And if we can accomplish all of these things, then it, it's just a huge win for everybody. Any final points from you, Ludo or Aaron, before we close? I would just say that in general, distribution grid, uh, not only here at the main energy, but in the country is going through a once in a lifetime transformation, right? We were pushing energy from one point down to the other, and it really never flew the other way towards us or towards our transformers. Now that is changing. We're seeing electricity to flow up the system, down the system. So it's very dynamic and those flows are creating a huge challenges for your traditional distribution system. So this is why the grid transformation is needed. This is why, you know, substation technology deployment is needed. This is why voltage island mitigation program is needed. Because if, if we just do nothing, we will start seeing issues on our distribution grid, and those issues will translate into customer interruption, customer outages, and, and just overall power quality of the grid. I'd like to thank Ludo Hintos and Aaron Tickle for their expertise, time, and participation. Learn more about grid resiliency and the grid transformation plan at dominionenergy.com slash grid improvement projects. Thanks for listening and be on the lookout for future episodes. I'm Nadia Ely.